Alrighty, great big PS5 console and games reveal last night. Huge presentation, a lot of stuff was shown. These are my highlights. Um, bear in mind, you'll definitely have your own highlights. We've all got different tastes. For example, Gran Turismo 7 was shown, which I'm sure is a big deal for a lot of people. Not so much for me, but to each their own. By all means, uh, let me know what your highlights were down below. So first up, Spider-Man Miles Morales. Uh, I have notes. <laughs> uh, up until the recent Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse movie, I never knew who Miles Morales was. But after seeing that, I'm like, yeah, more Miles would be actually great. Uh, it's been confirmed that this is an expansion and enhancement of the first game. Probably, a, you know, extra story with Miles and then the enhancements will be utilizing the power of the PS5. So I'm imagining greater draw distance, more detail. Holiday 2020, so I imagine that might be sort of a release window game, which would be good stuff. Looking forward to seeing some gameplay in action. Maybe they could uh, put in a setting to increase the swing speed. I'd be pretty happy. Swing speed in the first game was a bit, a bit too slow, which I know was because they could only... I uh, know, render out the world in front of them so fast, that's the swing speed was limited. PS5, I want to be just whipping around the city. Next up, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. It's been a long time since an original Ratchet and Clank game. 2016 game was wrapped up in the movie about the original game. Uh, yeah, and it wasn't particularly good. I played a bit and just, it just, no, it wasn't the same. But this being original story, so excited about also one of the few games to show gameplay this and gran turismo 7 showed like actual real gameplay to me this was the most next gen thing on the whole presentation i'm such a simpleton for me next gen means more stuff on screen and more particles uh, but when i watched gameplay of ratchet and clank i thought this is not possible on a ps4 uh, whereas most other stuff i saw well a lot of it was just trailers but even the Hitman game um, and some other stuff was like, oh, that, that could easily run on the PS4, no problem. So for me, this was a standout, a crack in time, which was, I don't know, 2011 or 12. Long time since like a big brand new Ratchet and Clank adventure. So excited. Stray. I don't care for pets, but this world is so imaginative and different than anything I've seen. Stray cats, I'm assuming there's probably other stray animals, and then all the humans are dead. Graffiti on the wall, rest in peace humans. Uh, what a cool world. Uh, yeah, really want to see more of that. Kenna, Bridge of Spirits. This was intriguing for me. I like the sort of nature setting of it all, the small village. There's one shot where she's walking into a village and it's completely like at one with nature and I mean they clicked and went I want to be playing this right now and I'll be doing that. That appeals to me. It might be combat heavy so mm, I'm kind of more interested in the world and the combat they showed but I'm uh, definitely curious to see more. Little Devil Inside. This was brilliant. <laughs> Funny, great art style want to know how much time you spend as the old man or how much time you spend as the adventurer or is it like 10% old man 90% adventure see it goes uh, best match cuts in the whole presentation that's for sure as the adventurer is coming down the ladder or the rope and drops a bomb and then it cuts to the old man on the toilet <laughs> a1 resident evil village or eight chris is back He's changed. I just finished Resident Evil, the first game, did a whole platinum journey about it. Uh, he's still kicking around, Chris Redfield. Good for him. Uh, it's going to be a long time before I get to Resident Evil 8. <laughs> just finished one, then two, three, four, five. Yeah, but it's nice to see old Chris Redfield from the first game. Is st it will still be there once I get to Resident Evil 8. And he's a bit of a menace. Has he gone mad? I don't know, and I don't want to know. I'll get there when I get there. Horizon 2 is officially confirmed. So yes, it's nice to get official confirmation and to get an idea of the setting. Really happy. So there are reports that it could be a co-op game. 
And there's a certain point in the trailer where Aloy is saying, oh, it's a task I must undertake alone or only I can do it or something like that. And I was anticipating there being a bot or as she's grabbing for a ledge, a hand comes and helps her. I was going, no, you've turned Horizon Co-op. I ruined it for me. Uh, but there's none that seem to be a solo adventure, maybe co-op is something that developers want to do in the first game and they might have as like a, an additional feature in the second game, but not center stage, which I'm okay with. Point of note, no release date. So I think we can pretty much say that for sure this is not a PS5 launch game. It's unfortunate, I know some of us are holding out and fingers crossed that hey, they've been pretty quiet and we could have a Ryzen launch game, but I doubt it. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't even get it next year, if it's a 2022 release. Like for example, zero gameplay, just a trailer. So <laughs> normally once you've seen that, you're at least six months, if not a year and a half or two years away from having your hands on the game. So nice notes in development, but a little disappointed that it's certainly not a launch game. Finally, we have the reveal of the actual console itself. First impression, that's interesting. I don't particularly like it, but I don't dislike it. It's grand. At the end of the day, it's going to be something I just chuck on the floor beside my TV. <laughs> Digital version and disc version, by the way. I didn't see that coming. I'm imagining that the digital only version is probably like 400 euros and then the uh, hard drive version is 450, if I was to guess, which I think is pretty fair. Or it might be 450 and 5, which I still think might be fair considering the crazy SSD in the PS5. Uh, yeah. Big question though. It can be turned on its side, but that little stand yoke. So the images of it on its side have that stand underneath it. Now, I'm definitely going to lose that. I have no doubt. I've already lost the, um, do you know the thing that connects your PS4 to your con? I lost that like months and months ago. Uh, I use a phone charger to charge the PS4 controller. So the actual stand that comes with the PS, if I don't have the stand, can I just put the PS5 down and will it be okay? Will it tip over? Because it looks sort of bottom heavy. Still questions. Is it made out of rubber, made out of plastic? If I lose that, can I get another one on the cheap? Or can I just turn the PS5 the other way around? And yeah, still have questions. Um, but the design of the PS5 itself, they wanted it to go in a bold direction. I suppose only so many black boxes you can make before you go, okay, can we change things up just a bit? Big thing though. So on the PS4, the design of the box is sort of like a trapezoid almost, except you it's slanted, <laughs> which means if you're coming over the top of it and trying to get into the back to put in a HDMI thing, because instead of it being like that on the back, like the PS1, it's like that. So I'm trying to put the cord in there, so I gotta tilt up this, and then I gotta put in HDMI, and then I'll tilt it back down. So I'm hoping for the PS5, it's just flat. Can we get a flat on the back so it's easier to reach around it and plug in stuff? I uh, did see there's like a USB-A and USB-C on the front of the thing, which is grand. Uh, but yeah, no slanting backwards at the back of the box, please, would be nice. And hopefully the stand is not mandatory. So uh, overall, good presentation considering the circumstances. Having the developers in front of a green screen and being able to read off lines and if they flub something, just do it again, we can cut it out. Most developers came off pretty darn well. Because it's the thing that they're developers, they're not presenters. So sometimes when you bring them on stage in front of a huge crowd at a place like E3, it's pretty nerve wracking and they may not come across as well as they could. Whereas with this, you can just put them in front of a green screen, say what you want to say, and we can cut around it. And uh, it, it highlighted developers in the best possible way. So overall, good presentation, um, not too long. Seeing the console, I actually didn't even expect that. I thought it was just going to be games. Uh, while the games themselves, nothing really stood out as, oh, next gen, gotta buy PS5 at launch. Um, but yeah, overall, considering the circumstances, well done. Six out of 10. All right, those are my thoughts and highlights. By all means, let me know yours down below. I am 
yeah, I'm working on South Park at the Fractured Boot Hole, Platinum Journey episode, which will be out in a few weeks. Until then, take care.